federal government summons 80 private aircraft owners over operating documents. The Nigerian Customs Service, NCS, is cracking down on improperly imported private jets in the country. So you have summoned around 80 operators of private jets to appear at their headquarters in Abuja with the aircraft import documents for verification. For verification. In 2021, there were similar efforts to ground private jets over unpaid import duties, but it was what was challenged in court. Additionally, the customs compiled a second list of 62 private jets where the owners did not show up for the inspection but were still held responsible for paying the import duty. Nonetheless, private jet owners who wanted to settle the import duty owed were given a 14-day deadline to do so. The exact number of jet owners who eventually settled their dues remains unknown. It is also uncertain how much the new customs leadership is prepared to pressure the influential private jet owners into paying their import duty. Joining us to throw more light on this matter is an aviation expert, Bengal Nitila. We also have two economists joining us, Mokhtar Mohamed. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you. So, to plus guys. Uh, Benga, yes, I it's important to start with you, given the fact that uh, you have a very, very profound uh, understanding of, of the industry and you've been a practitioner for a couple of, I uh, want to believe, well over a decade. Uh, yes, what's, your take, what's your take of this development? Uh, for me, I think it's a, it's a step in the right direction. And um, you know, aviation, aviation really should be treated as a, as a national security issue. Uh, when you take back to what happened at um, September 9-11, it shows you how critical anything that has to do with aviation it's um, a key, a key national security issue. So when you now have aircraft in the country being brought into the country, which you classify more as luxury item, because only the private jet is a luxury item, is a high end item. So in other countries, in other climes, there are heavy taxation on this, whether on the import duty side or the the fees that you pay to regulators in the country, depending on what you are running. Those aircraft for. So for us to have that huge number in the country, and part of the story says uh, a lot of them have been asking for temporary import duty permits, which has been unending. You know, you, you have the chance to do it for 12, first 12 months, then subsequently you're supposed to be able to do it for two additional periods of six months. But like forever, this has been unending. So if if uh, if the regulators the regulators on their side, which is the NCAA, they're also looking at the uh, uh, Nigeria Customs Service. How about this thing on ending on going? I think we are brought in a bit of politics into uh, a key national security issue and also something that will generate a lot of revenue for the country by a lot, because a bit of politics is involved, which ought not to be, because um, data is what drives data security are the key things that data security and everything you can list all those kind of things that things that drives within that sector data makes you see gives visibility into what exists in that in that environment then security a major item like i said since september 9 11 since 9 11 happened can see how um in terms of regulations and monitoring in education civil space has really gone so high. i think it's something we are really playing with something very risky here because you remember there was one time under good luck Jonathan when you had a pastor that had a jet that was used for a bit of money laundry. I, I think we all still remember the story. So th those are some of the abuses you will see when regulations are not well enforced. And to have such number of fees pending 
it's a it's a lot of money to take care of things within that sector. Benga, Benga, follow up question. I'm listening to you now, and I'm feeling a bit confused. Feeling a bit confused yeah. because one, uh, if it were to be uh, a prima facie issue of national security, it shouldn't be yeah. the customs that would be intervening. It should ordinarily be uh, a number of other agencies. Agencies, you are right, sir. You are very correct. I, I was going to I was going to answer that you will enlighten our public well enough, given your working knowledge of the industry. I, 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 I would have thought that the number of agencies in the security would, uh, but having said that, I, 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 I am thinking this is more of a fiscal, more of a revenue issue. But yeah. the disturbing part of it for me, if it's a revenue issue or a fiscal issue, is that. I know, Benga, that ordinarily you wouldn't have been able to register your vehicle with any of the vehicle uh, registration agencies in Nigeria if you had not, uh, if you could not present a well, you know, a complete customs document. How come NCAA allowed all those aircraft? to be registered without what does seem now to be relevant customs document that the customs is now belatedly, belatedly, it's almost uh, slapstick, it's almost comedy. How would you yeah. respond to that? So there are, there are two, two sides to that. A lot of them, when they buy these aircraft, they don't, they know, the registration of aircraft in Nigeria, you will see on that those aircraft, what we call 5 November, which means the aircraft is registered in Nigeria. Most of them registered, buy these aircraft and register them abroad, two shell companies abroad. And the reason for this is to, they come in, when you bring in such aircraft, it's supposed to be used for a stipulated number of times. What you're supposed to probably use for charter or some other corporations. But now, the problem now is, the, how is the regulator now tracking the time frame for such use of aircraft in the country on ending. Some of them probably have been in this country for 10 years, 15 years. Charter is an adult operation. Adult, just used for maybe, uh, it could be for um, emergency evacuation. It could be for um, top high network client that just come into the country, that just bring it in and take it out. But what you have seen happening on ending now, most of these aircraft are not being used on ending as for personal use. Some are even being used for commercial. They're not even registered as commercial for commercial operations. So you are, you are right. That what, where is now the oversight of NCAA in these things to say if you are if an aircraft is registered abroad, it can only be run. You can only run operations here for a stipulated number of times. You can't run operations on the ending. And if you go check, you will find that most of these aircraft are actually registered abroad because of the issues of insurance, because of the issue of maybe possession or takeover and been slammed action. So when slam actions come, a whole lot of them say, oh, they are not actually registered in Nigeria. But the question now is, when were this aircraft actually uh, put for either registration with NCAA or a return, if something was filed with Nigerian custom before you are bringing it in? It now needs to go back to the dates that most of these things are done. Because even if you are granting waivers, waivers are not an ending. So here, the regulator is also culpable, aside from the Nigerian custom service. Copyable. Because if you don't pay your fees, why will you issue permits to operators in the country and grant with us? Just another fourth question to uh, the illuminating explanation you've just given. I I'm also thinking, in view of the uh, explanation of uh, enlightenment that you've just given us now, uh, the very factor that the leverage to, to use the aircraft, uh, quote unquote, illegally in Nigeria, that factor could yeah. still be leveraged. That factor could still be leveraged to, uh, to at least make a case against the customs law. We are not registered in Nigeria. We only operate this aircraft here based on maybe. Um, uh, what is supposed to be fleeting, uh, if, if you want to hound us, 
uh, let's take the aircraft to where ordinarily it is registered, or could that look? Uh, uh, but those, uh, those, those, those kind of registration have a timeline. It has a timeline. It's not on an ending thing. Then two, it's also what is the purpose of using that aircraft also in the country? Another key thing that needs to be answered. So if you're registering those, those kind of aircraft and they're coming to the country for temporary use, like I said, is it for uh, emergency evacuation? Is it for things that have to do with health? Is it for bringing in but, high level? High okay, I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, uh, Benga. Uh, let, let me let me go to uh, your colleagues. Uh, Mukhtar, uh, I, I guess given your position as an economist and somebody who um, who monitors the financial overview or the revenue profile of the country, this to you will be stricto facto. A revenue analysis, am I right? Well, yeah, it's a good thing. We need all the money we, we have to get. Um, and this government um, is a government that can, uh, wherever they can get money, they go right there to get the money. So, yes, but again, there is always the business angle of everything that you do. Um, you see, it's only in Nigeria that um, you bring in a car through the custom, you have your all your documents clear through the custom. You, the custom gives you documents, and you clear that vehicle. And then on the way, you now see custom uh, checkpoint again, trying to confirm whether you really actually imported it. Then they come, oh, you didn't import it. You didn't import it directly. There's some fee you needed to pay. Meanwhile, that vehicle came through the port, through all the checks, about four checkpoints in the port. So why are you having custom having a checkpoint also on the road on vehicles. Sometimes these vehicles were bought over three or four years. So that shows that um, leadership and capacity is not there. If um, this issue of private airline is not new, a private jet owner, remember that President Buhari wanted to do it some three years ago through the then um, DG of Custom. Uh, they, took him, they took them to court. And at the end of the day, um, those, uh, they, 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 they didn't go ahead with it. Now, there's a technical side of it, like Mr. Benga was saying, is where, whereby I, I have a right to register my business somewhere. But you need to ask them why they're doing that. They are doing that because of the premium attached to insurance and repairs of these uh, 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 um, uh, aircraft when they have any issue. Because you know that Nigerian insurance do not even have the capacity to handle um, leasing for most of these airlines. So most of their, their insurance are done abroad. Are not done here in Nigeria. So sometimes they want to create that value. And so that's what they, they, they normally do. So I think it boils down to our capacity to do things the right way because you cannot um, allow revenue to go off you. And now you are saying you have a 25% fine. And then looking at the exchange rate, at, at, at when you would have done it, you would have had more value than what you are going to have now. So I think um, it's all about um, having the political will to do the right thing. It, now these present um, administrations are there. They are now looking for a way for revenue. So it does not give you the kind of uh, 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 respect that you have from business people. International committee wants to come and do business with you. So we need, um, for me, that's my major um, issue. But to say or whether the right thing, if anybody are taking revenue off government, even in developed nations, you, you might have done it tax invasion for 10 years, 20 years, the day they, you are caught, you have to pay for all this. So it's not new, but there must be uh, capacity. It's not that you start along the way, then you stop, then you are going back again. Okay, let me go to uh, your colleague. Um, what would be your open salvo? We've had uh, Benga, we've had uh, Mokhtar. Your open salvo, please. All right. So, so you know, I, I was saying that it's a very interesting conversation, especially given the peculiar challenges that we face as a country today, the revenue challenge, you know, and I've always said that the problem we have as a country is a revenue challenge and not, you know, necessarily a fiscal problem, um, which, you know, you can allude to the subsidy question, the subsidy removal question in particular, and all of the brouhaha that that has put us into. You know, this is one of those areas that some of us have spoken about when we talk about revenue leakages in this country, you know, to, to find that if you do the numbers, you know, just 
depending on the value of the aircraft that we're talking about. And um, uh, we say there are 80 of them. And uh, just a cursory search on Google will tell you that the cheapest second-hand private jet you can find will be about $2, $2 million. And you could be talking as high. If it's a high-end business, private business jet, you could be talking as high as $400 million. So if we just use a rule of thumb and just say, average it out, since we really don't have an idea what category of uh, private jets we're talking about, and just do a rule of thumb and say maybe 20 million average cost for this one, and it could be significantly higher than that. We're talking at today's exchange rate, between 60 billion to 100 billion naira in lost revenues, just on this alone. You know, so, so for me, this, this is a significant step that the government is taking. Um, I hope that they will stick to their guns and push this through to the end, bearing in mind that the people that we're talking about are well-resourced people. You know, if you, if you have enough money to own a private jet, surely you have connections in high places. And I think that's why this matter has been frustrated for as long as it has been. Um, so one would hope that uh, the, the, the administration of uh, President Bola Metinobu will go a step further beyond what, you know, the previous administration had done and uh, bring these guys to justice. And I hope that the full penalties that are payable on this, this, this uh, evaded custom duties are fully charged. And let's not forget that evasion, tax evasion, potentially there's a criminal element to this. Uh, I know that we're talking about powerful people, so you probably won't be able to go down that road. But I think if you dangle that over their head um, with all of the national security implications that are involved, involve the Attorney General of the Federation, the National Security Advisor, you should be able to create enough leverage and, you know, over these guys to get these monies in so that the government will stop saying they cannot pay um, minimum wage, for example. Somebody, somebody jocularly said not too long ago that uh, uh, the Saudi uh, air apparent treatment may be, may be useful sometimes in Nigeria. Uh, invite them all to a particular place and get them however luxurious the place may be, get them locked up and until they make the payments, uh, you don't go. But uh, I just wonder, I wonder now that if the ostensibly austere Boani administration could not, uh, could not do it, I, I wonder what this administration can do after all the drama that we are witnessing now. How would you respond to that? Well, I mean, this president, look, if there's anything, and I've always said this, that a president that did what all the previous administrations have failed to do, have been unable to do with the subsidy issue, you know, the uh, Buari, President Buari categorically refused to remove subsidy. And it wasn't because he didn't, I don't think he, he lacked the courage. I think he just felt he was going to create problems. Um, President Jonathan tried it. He met stiff resistance you, from you, public. You feel, you feel he does not lack the courage, but he, 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 uh, he didn't just want to do it. Absolutely. I couldn't square Absolutely. that. Thing. Absolutely. That, that's what I feel, based on the things that he said, right? And then President Jonathan also tried it. Um, he met resistance and stopped. But this president, on the very first day in office, you know, just took the bull by the horn. Remove this subsidy. Um, we're all seeing the outcome now. Whether it's good or bad, we, it remains to be seen. You know, but but I don't think anybody can accuse President Bola Metinubu of lacking in will or courage. So if it is will and courage that is required to face these people, I think that we have that in abundant supply with this president. I, I, I want I want to believe I want to believe that uh, you are right because. Uh, we're not talking of uh, a generic issue here where somebody can just uh, mount a podium and pronounce that, you know, all subsidy has been removed. In this matter, we'll be speaking to people who are close to him, his friends, his uh, people, is, uh, people in his networking portfolio, people who uh, maybe some even family members. But uh, it's, it's not the topic for today. Let me go to Benga. Yes, we are where we are now, at least it is obvious. And uh, contemporary history also has, uh, you know, informed us well enough 
that we have people who are just operating by their own standards in the aviation industry, especially uh, private jet owners. Uh, regularization is always like the like the last uh, last uh, opinion uh, posited by uh, one of your colleagues. Regularization is always something uh, that one would ordinarily welcome if it's done uh, properly and effectively. But as somebody who has a, a more profound understanding of the industry, do you think uh, this would amount to anything tangible? Are you that optimistic? Uh, well, so if you if you if you've seen the trend, like you rightly said, who are the people that actually own private jets? Let's even start from there. Top executives in um, all the banks, political associates of the, of the present government. Uh, people in the oil and gas. Most of these private jets are owned by individuals that own big conglomerates, big corporations in Nigeria. Uh, we are talking about institutions that um, um, generate so much more into the Nigerian economy. Because a private jet cannot be owned by somebody that has salary, that being paid salary monthly. The, 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 the land, the, the cost of maintenance, keeping the aircraft going, paying for parking charges, paying for the crew, maintaining the crew, ensuring their licensing and order, maintenance, regularizing all the documentation of the SCAA is huge and enormous. So the, the, the problem now is when you have uh, when you have an NCAA that is not that on paper by regulation it shows that it's autonomous, but it's not fully autonomous because now you still have it a bit more accountable somehow to the Ministry of Aviation. Also, you still have uh, the, the, the cost of, in countries like America, not even say, let, let's even say in places like South Africa, we won't, they won't be having this kind of discussion. All these aircraft will have been grounded. None of them will operate again. Serious, uh, because when, when you even, when you're talking about tax evasion, it's even a very criminal offense. It's a federal criminal offense, tax evasion. So there should not even be any conversation around Let's hear them. Let's when, when, I, when, I, when, I hear, when I hear you contributors are uh, using the word tax, I'm a bit, uh, this is supposed to just be an issue of tariff. Because import tax, duty. Import, import duty, duty, which is like yeah, a that, that, tariff. That, that, that is what due to government. All these guys never paid it. And they, but but it, will, it will surprise you, sir. When you have people that are running commercial airliners like Epis, they slam them so much and they make sure they collect it from them. Those are people that should get such waivers. Not aircraft. private charts, private, uh, uh, what do you call it? Private jet companies. The likes of Airbus, the likes of, um, uh, what do you call it, Ebom here, those are the people that should be getting the exemption and waivers. Because in those organized countries, they give them tax evasion, tax ever up to 25 years, 25, 30 years, because they are adding value to the economy. Private jet owners is luxury. We shouldn't even be having this conversation. Those aircraft will stop operating in Nigeria. That's the way. That's the way it should work. Because now you have a lot of them circumventing the purpose, even the purpose of registration. A lot of them are not being used to do private charter, commercial. But that was not what they were registered for. They were not being used for running commercial operations in Nigeria, which, if you notice some months back, the DG of NCAA talked about regular, regularization of documentation and stopping some, actually, some, some private jet owners were slammed because they are being used, circumvented for use, for commercial operation, which is not what they were registered for. But in essence, it should start with that import duty stuff because they do that with the commercial airliners. How much more private jets Car owner. Because there are some jets, for example, a company, a company like Airbus, you know, there is dry lease, there is wet lease. There are some aircraft they have that is not actually their own aircraft, that would be wet lease from another company. So they don't have the 5 November registration, which means it's not actually their aircraft, because but they are running it through partnership with another company through which they do the lease from. So the same practice is what those guys are bringing to the private jet um, issue. And if you check most of them, most of them are being used for commercial operation. But they should not even have entered this country at all without us con collecting all the dues and levies from them. That's the, that's the cost of the issue. If we can do that with those running commercial airliners in Nigeria and ensure we get everything from them, 
how much more those that do private that have private jets to use for their personal lifestyle or luxury and some of them are even circumvented using it for commercial operations that's where you should start from so if you're not paying government statutory levies and dues I'm, i don't know what we're going to call that are we going to call it evasion or what okay. we are where we are now this uh, this elite uh, they have those craft you know they have them on terra firma nigeria uh many of them according to uh, the enlightenment that uh, Benga has given us now uh, many of them operate this craft uh these are not pins these are not uh, invisible objects uh, ordinarily uh with a you no, know, with a clear, clear purpose and the resolve to do the right thing, uh, the owners should be easy, or the operators, or the people who are up custody or who manage this asset should be easy to laser in on and be made to do the right thing. But just like I asked, uh, bring uh, I also want to ask you, are you very optimistic that uh, this will amount to uh, we will still in some couple of years' time, like we are doing now, subsequent to the noise we had a couple of years back, we may still be coming back to this issue in the same disturbing light? Uh, Mukta? Yeah, I, I, I'm not confident. Uh, that's the truth. Um, <laughs> somebody, somebody said um, subsidy, it was easy for him to take this decision of subsidy because it was not going to affect his people those much. The, the elite and the rich are not really as affected by subsidy. The only way they were affected by subsidy is the money they make from subsidy. And a lot of them were not really, um, were not, uh, most of them, it's not like an all-comma affair where every of the rich were involved in subsidy. So it was more or less like, uh, one of them will be affected and they, they might see that as a victory for them that are not enjoying the subsidy but because again the removal of subsidy was taken because i mean you could see the effect the effect is more on the on the poor than on the rich now when it comes to an issue of um, 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 finding of the airlines company we are beginning to tell, ask them giving them 30 days that's why i'm not optimistic this after 30 days it could be extended for another six months so when you begin to hear, hear such statements, then you begin to realize that uh, there's a lot that meets the eye. So for me, I'm not optimistic. Um, once it's something that involves them, it is always um, it, it, it always take a lot or a time of lot of due, due processes when it comes to them. Remember that this thing was hotter some years ago where some of them went to court. So be rest assured that some of them will still go to court again, and so that will not elongate the the, the period. And then before you know, they will say, okay, let's do out of court, out of court settlement. Uh, instead of paying the penalty, then you just put they just put it in the they will just remove the cash from the from their pocket in front and just say, okay, take it. Uh, so I'm not too that um, optimistic about it. Uh, I, I still remember a popular Nigerian musician then said that uh, those people that are still good and foul, they will parade them in crime fighter. When the politicians that are still billions of dollars, they will come to the to the to the court on a, on air conditioner club uh, car with escorts. So once it has everything to do with the with the elite, there's always a way that uh, they have to settle it. Like um, fella will say, party party government. So I am not that optimistic about uh, what will come out from me. I know the government need revenue, uh, like Mr. Oh, uh, okay. Shadon said, about the hundred billion. But I can tell you, they will settle. Uh, Mokta, let, let me pass the ball to Shagun. Um, your colleagues don't seem to be sharing your optimism. <laughs> uh, more so when, when, like you know, the, the 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 people who fall into the category of those who are being subjected to this uh, to this. Uh, task of accountability, they have the constitutional rights to go to court, especially if they believe 
that they are being wrongly hounded, and you know how the judicial system works. Uh, you also know how people who are well resourced can get some of the most brilliant, some of the most brilliant, some of the brightest lawyers in the land, and uh, ultimately they may they may intimidate. Uh, the intimidator get the you know get the hunter to be to be hunted, and you know what? A couple of years down the road, we may be speaking uh, to Renchi again, just as we are doing. Your response? Well, yes, I I understand um, uh, the lack of um, <clears throat> optimism <clears throat> with regards to the will of the president to address this. Um, you know, I mean, we're all Nigerians, and we've seen how these things play out. Um, like uh, Mokhtar says, party party governments, you know, um, and we all know who these people generally are without going into any specifics. So, yes, it's, it, 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 might, it might appear difficult, you know, for the president to take this fight on. But I, but I, but I would imagine that at the end of the day, he's faced with, um, you know, this, this dilemma of... Um, you know, going after these guys who may be his friends and maybe even his family members, um, and confronting the acute revenue uh, gaps that we have in this country, bearing in mind that this issue is a criminal issue. You know, let's not forget that duty evasion is like tax evasion. It's a criminal offense. Uh, there are different uh, um, uh, punitive actions, I including agree you, I fully yes. agree with you, Shabun. That is why yeah. that is why a, a custom a custom checkpoint would ordinarily uh, confiscate a vehicular exactly. asset from you if they exactly. are, if they perceive that it's not, it's not properly documented to are coming to the country to the right, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, process. So, but the, okay, go ahead. I mean, yeah, let me so, so, uh, absolutely. So, so because it is a criminal issue, um, I think that we, especially for us, for me as a, <clears throat> a public analyst, and I do know that uh, government officials actually watch these programs, I think it's important for them to understand that the eyes of the public are also on them, and um, there's a lot of signaling and optics involved in all of this. If this matter gets swept under the carpet, um, and we hear nothing about it uh, two, three months after now, or they magically get another six-month extension, even though they've, they've been extended beyond the limits provided by the law, um, then we as Nigerians have the right to begin to ask questions and say, look, what's going on here? How come we were able to remove subsidy with such um, a grand bravado and something as simple? Because this is really straightforward. It's cut and dry. There, there is no complicity or, I'm sorry, complication to this. It's that you have brought in um, luxury items into the country. You have duties that you're supposed to pay. You have not paid them. Please pay them, sir. Or uh, face, the, face, face, the, face the music of the law. You know, so if that doesn't happen, then I think Nigerians are well within their rights to begin to look at this um, administration and this government and ask them very tough questions. And, and you know, this, the, the, these things um, may look uh, simple and they may look as if uh, they, they are trivial, but at the end of the day, it all adds up. The anger that people are feeling today with regards to what they are going through, something like this would add to that anger and that frustration. That the fact that the rich friends of the president can get away, you know, with blue murder, not paying the things that they're supposed to pay, that maybe would have made it unnecessary to remove the subsidies in the first place, just saying, you know, then how come that is not being pursued? While the poor man is suffering, you know, uh, with regards to even the price of Gary, Gary is now a rich man's food in this country. So I think the president is under, uh, will be under pressure, you know, to do the right thing in this case and go after these guys, regardless of the power that they, they and influence that they obviously will wield, uh, you know, with the people in government. Uh, but, sorry, sir, let me just say something. Excuse me, just permit me to say, Shegun, I don't think the government will really go slam at these guys. Let me tell you why. Aviation is the top of the pyramid in any economy. The top of the pyramid interpretation in, in when it comes to transportation. And it's, a, it's the top echelon in the society that are there. The things they do do not impact the low-level people like impacted people within the uh, when we remove subsidy. So I don't think, like uh, uh, Bola said, he might need to come, come out of court settlement at the end of the day that this guy just paid the stiff hands and just walk away. But the real issue that we should be talking about is 
How did all these aircraft enter the country and start running, whatever they are running, without all those fees? A, a, a private jet is bigger than a, a normal vehicle. The private jet is bigger than a normal vehicle. What it takes for you to even enter the country, all the documentation, are you more serious than the documentation it takes for a vehicle to enter the country? Yet, customs have a way of impounding those vehicles, have a way of getting all the fees. Even you see them along the road chasing vehicles at um, different other different um, checkpoints along the way. You see them when you travel either to the east or wherever you see them. But for an aircraft that is that big, the first place for you to enter the country, customs themselves are, uh, what do you call it, are culpable. Two, so the regulator, the regulator that even gave them operating license, that still gave them an operating license, knowing fully well they did not pay all those territory fees, it's also culpable. So it's oh, the, the regulator is culpable. The Nigerian customs is culpable. What about when you now start talking about inland federal inland revenue and all that? So there are a lot of things around this uh, uh, the drama that is facing the world. What I see is just a drama. And I think in, in the coming days, it's just going to pick up because it's not something that impacts the common man. If it's, if it's something about commercial aviation, we know the commercial aviation will impact everybody in the country. If it's an airpiece that this is being turned to on people here or any of the um, local domestic operators that we have, that some of these things are being turned to, then you know it's going to disrupt the ecosystem of transportation. Or right here, this is not going to disrupt ecosystem of transportation is only going to uh, disrupt them, them. And if it doesn't trickle, it doesn't impact anything that does, the majority of the people in the society, I don't think any serious thing will go on with this thing. Thank you very much, Brenda, for, for that uh, enriching uh, and enlightening um, submission. But, but let me quickly uh, go to Muta now. Muta. Uh, in some in some jurisdictions, uh, tax collectors easily easily use such luxurious objects to to go into action. Uh, I, I know some jurisdictions. I know in South Africa, once you are driving a luxurious vehicle, the tax uh, operatives would super you wanting to make sure that your lifestyle is reconcilable with your uh, with your tax uh, payments but here we are talking about even the bona fide agencies NCAA customs and a number of other uh, agencies not even doing their primary duties well, not to talk of uh, a secondary agency like the Federal Inland Revenue uh, leveraging the fact that you are living big to tax you appropriately. Uh, are we not, you know, is it not all a comedy in our, in our, in our society? Or how would you, or am I being just too cynical? Uh, I, don't think you have, I, I don't think you have been too cynical. Is that the truth? I've kept saying it that um, when Nigerian government say want to widen the tax bracket, is to tax the already tax. They don't widen the tax bracket by trying to get more people into the tax bracket. They're putting more 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 pain on those that are already paying taxes. Um, so when you hear them say, "Oh, we are widening the tax net," they are going. They are beginning to come to meet people that are already paying tax and telling them you have to pay more because we think you are doing you are you are making more money. They always think like that. If you look at the political class, all you need to do is go through their maybe ministers or uh, they go through their clearing. Some of them where it's only when they have ministerial clearing or they have to go to the Senate or whatever that they go and pay tax. You know, there was a time I can't remember a certain minister that paid tax of 70,000. That is what he say he paid in tax. So once they come to the tax issue, but we mustn't forget that uh, there is always a tax loophole any part in the world where the elite can actually be able to see a means of escape. In one way or the other, you could see that has been done in America with Donald Trump and other. There's always a loophole, and uh, and, uh, and as a businessman, you always look. 
uh, without wanting to use the word correction, a, a slight and polite correction. Uh, he did it. He did it for decades, but ultimately, a jury of twelve Americans like him sat down, thought through the documents presented to them, and he's been convicted on thirty-four grounds. Yeah, I, I, know, no, I, I know that. What I'm saying that. that what, what I'm saying that he, he got away with it for a very long time because he felt there was a loophole. That's what I'm trying to say. Because until this jury was until this jury came in and then did a good job and then said, Look, you are not supposed to. I mean, you have done a lot of activation. And remember again, he's still saying he's going to appeal it. So it's still not a conclusive um, process. I was supposed I was supposed that is the right in natural justice. Uh, let me go yeah, to yeah. Shogun now. Let, let me go to Shogun now for his denouement. Uh Shogun, uh uh, you, you seem to have started uh, this session on a very hawkish, very uh, resolute. I, I, you know, at some point, I was suddenly praying that, uh, why, why would the president not have appointed somebody as uh, determined as this gentleman? But along the line, I guess when your colleagues, and probably my myself playing my devil's advocacy role, uh, we have we seem to have uh, imputed some lack of optimism into you. So uh, how would you want to wrap it up? Uh, no. are, you still on the, are you still on the hawkish or you are a bit disillusioned about or distraught about how the system works? In no, absolutely not. Fairness in Nigeria. Absolutely not. You know, I, 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 like I said before, I think that part of the reason we're having this conversation is also to um, highlight in the public consciousness the right things that have to happen. Whether they will happen or not is a completely different question. And that's where, you know, my colleagues on this show this evening have their point. But we must continue to say, you know, publicly that this issue should be addressed. It should not be swept under the carpet. In fact, what I actually find surprising is, like you have said, you know, you look at other, other jurisdictions. A man that can afford a private jet, you know, can afford to pay taxes. How are we, how is it that the, the, the custom duty chargeable on a private jet is 5%? You know, I was absolutely shocked to my bone marrow to find that. We shouldn't be talking of anything less than 20%. Do you know that the, the duty rate on solar um, components is 10%? Solar components that we need to generate power in this country, you pay duty of 10% of the value of the, of the of the invoice value to government. But a private jet owner pays 5%. We shouldn't be talking of anything less than 30 to 40%. That's the way it's done in other jurisdictions. People that are rich and that can afford the comfort and luxuries of this world, of this life, get charged heavily so that they can, in a way, subsidize the poor. So I my, my stance is still very, very resolute and hawkish. I think that the president must, even if only for optics, to show to the suffering people, suffering public of Nigeria, that, you know, it's a sacrifice. Everybody involved, both at the top of the pyramid and the middle of the pyramid and the people living at the bottom of the pyramid, that they, we will all have to make sacrifices. We'll have to chip in the little that we need to chip in to ensure that this country gets better. So that is my charge. You know, to, to to this administration and to this president, we we sh we cannot afford to allow you know the optics of letting this go under the carpet or letting this slide uh, be the narrative that would that would drown this. It, it would be very unfortunate. I think the government must be very resolute and sound. Go after this and get all this money paid. Shagun, always intellectually stimulating to to engage with you. I I really want to thank you at least for. Uh, the moral pulpit that you are banging well enough for those who are in who are in government and those who have conscience in the in the public sector uh, to listen to. Uh, thank you, Shagun. Uh, Benga, uh, about yes, time we wrapped it. About time we wrapped it up, and we need to get your uh, your two thought, your insider's opinion uh, for closure. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the first one is, um, I think that all this aircraft needs to be first grounded. A hammer should come from the regulator, which is the NCAA. After they've checked, if NCAA has checked on their side, 
Are you saying he's the one that has the power to actually slam these guys and stop them? If you can stop those aircraft from running, that's when they that's when the issues come because no aircraft should be on the ground for too long. It's cost on the owners because you are going to pay landing fees, maintenance issues will start copying in and the whole lot. So I think they should start with the NCA. Let the NCA check all their documentations and terms, all the fees, factory fees that's supposed to be. If they are not being paid, let us start with the NCA. Then let the custom come in and get whatever needs to be gotten. Then going forward, going forward is what we now pay attention to. When people bring their craft into the country going forward, who, who will now have proper oversight over customs itself to ensure that customs um, get all the statutory fees paid by the people that are bringing these jets into the country. Like I said, running aviation is a national security issue. People just think it's a very slight issue because the greatest, um, one, of the most, one of the most monumental in history that has been committed, the act that has been committed in history, 9-11, when it dated back. And the, because the, the damage is always, it always shows something that is national. So when you now talk about aviation itself, that's why safety is one of the core words of, of aviation. So when, when you have people that have breached such protocols, I think the national security people should also put their eyes on this thing because people can use even private jet to commit a lot of acts. Because now you can move around anyhow or compared to commercial airport, commercial flight operators that you still need to do a whole lot of things. Not even for a private jet, but just get on your jet. Again, you can be used to commit a lot. So people, national security uh, should also, national security agents should also pay attention to this particular thing as well. So that's why I think- Thank you very much, uh, Benga. Uh, thank you, Benga, for, uh, for that uh, uh, enlightening position. Uh, Mukhtar, how would you want to wrap it up? Uh, I really would pray that Mukhtar does not agree with me on this, but you see when, the producer sent me the topic in my basic research. At some point, I got to a point and I was telling myself, even custom said, could this be a shakedown opportunity for them? Not necessarily because they want to do it, to get the right result, but maybe this is a, this is an opportunity to just uh, shake down those who have deep pockets. Uh, don't, don't agree with me. I'm uh, also... <laughs> How would you want to wrap it up? Well, I, I, like I said, I also said I don't see anything coming out of it. Um, you say it diplomatically, and that's what that's how I feel. When you see such policies in Nigeria, where they tell you you have to come to custom, you have to come to the office, you have to show your documents, you always know what happened. Who are these? Um, more, uh, who are these? People? You'll be surprised tomorrow now. Out of these eighty jet owners that we have, about eighty or ninety. Some of them will fly their jet by this night, and the NCA and everybody will give them the permission to fly out. And they will say, Oh, he has gone for turnaround maintenance. He has gone for maintenance. He has gone for maintenance. So I am not too optimistic about it, but I think um, revenue must be collected by government. Any serious minded government will not fold their hand and say hundreds of billions. Because I can tell you that by the time you look deep inside, what has happened previously with that. They had a deep pocket and they were able to kill some of these issues and they continue now. There's a saying in Nigeria that they said when a new man comes in, he tried to get his own men, he tried to get his own team. So there's a new director for custom, he's, he's in. So you can read between the lines. Okay. Uh, uh, Mokta, I, I, I guess, you know, today you have been the cynic in chief, uh, CNC of the show. Uh, and I know you are a very serious-minded person. Why you are choosing to agree with me on all these cynical grounds today, only God can forgive you. Uh, this is where we must wrap it up. Gentlemen, I really appreciate uh, this uh, informative, enlightening, and uh, public policy enriching uh, discourse. Uh, always a pleasure to engage with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you this is where we we'll wrap up the show for today. House politics. Have a good evening.